Mr. Speaker, I yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized for such time as he may consume. The question is, where are we today? We're looking at this conflict today and the consequences that it has upon tomorrow and tomorrow's military readiness. I spoke about the lack of readiness last summer. Others did as well. We had a hearing on it a good number of months ago. And our committee responded, and, and we thank the gentleman from California for helping in that massive effort to re-equip our army as was necessary, and hopefully we'll be able to, to do more in the future. But where are we today? Yesterday, regarding the issue of readiness of our Army, the Army Chief of Staff, General Schoomaker, said that the increase of 17,500 Army combat veterans, combat troops in Iraq represents only the tip of the iceberg and will potentially require thousands of additional support troops and trainers as well as equipment, further eroding the Army's readiness to respond to other world contingencies. In the last 30 years, there have been 12 military engagements, some large, some small, that our country has engaged in. Pentagon says they would only need some 2,500 support troops for the 20,000 plus uh, combat troops. Congressional Budget Office says there's going to be a nece necessary 13,000 additional support troops. But the issue of readiness is real. It is there today because of additional combat troops. And that's what we're debating today. That's exactly the issue today. The readiness of tomorrow is contingent upon what happens today. I yield.